Hello everyone and welcome to the M Word. My name is Ariana. And I am Matt. And we are playing Viva La Resistance! Also known as We the Revolution. So that let's one. talk to this guy. The defendant may introduce himself. We all know who this villain is! Yes, to know. Mathieu Burrell, Commander-in-Chief of the National Guard, and SHUT UP ALREADY! Let us proceed directly to the testimony. So, this guy, if you don't remember, is the person that we just signed an order that he could shoot people. And we previously talked about how he saved his life, and now he's standing before us on trial for shooting people. Mm-hmm. Kind of odd how that works. <laughs> yeah. Now, it's not, it's not that he shot people. We're not, we didn't just give, like, a 007 a license to kill. <laughs> we ordered, we gave him an order saying that he could defend himself if needed. Well, the, well, the order of. was a bit use, vague. They can use force to disrupt yeah. ruffians and whatnot. Well, so. the way we interpreted it after seeing that he died when we didn't give that order was, yeah, that. Yeah, so, but we'll all the see. way around, and he anyway. got kids. Either way. In the dock sits Matthew Burrell, the former commander-in-chief of the National Guard. The defendant stands accused of causing the death of 34 people who took part in a demonstration against the mar monarchic, monarchic, I don't know, authority. Monarchic. Monarchic. You? <laughs> Around 3 p.m., two spontaneous groups of protesters stumble upon each other in one of the streets leading to Palace and Vendome. Vendome. I don't know. A quarrel broke out between the supporters and opponents of Citizen Capet, which both sides engaged in a heated argument. None of the involved parties managed to gain the upper hand, and they quickly resorted to name-calling and public <laughs> threats. Bravo, everybody. Bravo. I fought in your general direction. <laughs> Yeah, my mom was a hamster! And your father smelled of... Actually, it's the other way around. No. Oh, and your father smelled of elderberries. And, yes. Yeah, just kidding. Sorry. Yeah. Soon after, a National Guard detachment led by the defendant... I don't know why I'm dating you if you can't quote Monty Python. <laughs> arrived at the scene, according to the eyewitness testimony of Blaise Fawcett, Commander-in-Chief Matthew Burrell stood himself between the two groups alone and attempted to talk simp into them. He was quickly shouted down by the protesters. A few of them vocally accused the camp Commander-in-Chief of violating their freedom of speech. Hashtag triggered. A rock flew over Burrell's head. He then walked up to the regiment that until this point stood away from the crowd. The commander-in-chief ordered them to load their muskets and aim at the protesters. He shouted the, to the mob that they should leave, which the people of France, of course, ignored. Of course ignored? I'm sorry. If a gun is pointed at me, regardless if it's, you know, a musket and not terribly accurate, I would probably leave. But... Yeah. Well, but, but but again, that just kind of shows what kind of mental state this mob was in, that they're just like, whatever. Yeah. All right. Then, as Fawcett testified, another rock barely missed his head. This time he managed to hit one of the soldiers in the chest, leaving him breathless for a moment. Burrell ordered the troops to fire. Bullets reached 34 people in total on both sides of the protest. During his arrest, Burrell tried to explain that he had the tribunal's opinion, which stated that he could use force if needed. He tried to defend himself with similar opinions from the convention. Prosecutor Kit Tinville did not care for deputies to dis sorry, did not care for such explanations and his fiery speech convinced the deputies to dismiss him. Now he is trying to convince the judge to impose an additional punishment. You know what, Tinville? We don't really I like you. I still have that stick. Yeah. I think you still need it. Yeah, get your polygon head out of here. So we have already gone through this accidentally because I wasn't recording like an id. So we kinda of know the answers to this. So causing death is an accusation. Cause it's just, yeah. Uh, commander in chief's dismissal, course events, tribunal opinion. That's our opinion. It was his defense. Stop going so fast. <sighs> Injured soldiers, of course, will events because it happened. No. Oh, extenuating circumstances, my friend. Right. Or to load musket we did this is perfectly, course of events. And you Shh. ruined it. Uh, accusation. Mm -hmm. His personality, the crowd's favor is. Uh, extenuating circumstances. Mm -hmm. And then accusation for his recklessness. See, I didn't do too bad. You did pretty bad. We did it oh, perfect. Okay. Anyways, so our family and the common folk want him dead. The revolutionaries want him in prison. So I think we should aim for prison because we need the revolutionaries on our side at this point. Also, I don't agree with killing him. No. I think that's a dick move. He should go free by like, all accounts. Like, he had our, you know... Our blessing in a way to go do it, which we could do. We can yeah. set him free, but our family would probably hate us. Yeah, probably. 
I think prison is fine. I think he was a little bit too gung ho. He should have. But at the same time, like they were literally about to, or they hurt his guard, right? Do you see this? Prison, they hate more than actually letting him go free. <laughs> they want him dead. And like, oh well, you know, you could put him in prison, but we'd really rather him go free in that case. Like, what? Oh, and, well, an acquittal even brings out the revolution or the revolutionists. Down a little bit. They don't want him free. No, that brings it up. Brings no, it up. look, they're going up on a prison oh. war. Acquittal yeah, 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 goes yeah, down. Yeah. But I mean, like, in general, yes. acquittal goes up. Mm. So we could technically. We could. Let's Let see how the questions play out. Exactly. See what he's like. All right. So you understand that 34 citizens were killed. Those that are killed were aggressors who dared to attack a soldiers. All 34 of them. No, he was hit by a rock thrown by a single person. Before that, another rock flew over my head. I had reason to believe the mob would become violent. That's exactly why you were sent there, to prevent violence. Oh, and I did. Several people died, but the rest of the citizens are safe. This commander-in-chief is a real piece of work. He's not commander-in-chief anymore. Still a bastard, though. Um, okay. okay. Do we want to summon the witness now or later? Let's do it later. Let's do okay. this one. Does he, does he accuse not think that the order to load muskets may have been issued too early? Why? Because it could have further aggravated the crowd that was already outraged. The people of Paris have an ugly history of impaling heads on pikes. I had a sizable mob before me that was quite obviously ready to attack us at any moment. No, the order was not issued too early. More than that, we should have started shooting as soon as we arrived instead of wasting our time trying to calm them down. Okay, buddy, he's going a little bit too far. Yeah, so you believe in brute force rather than diplomacy. If diplomacy had any chance of success in the situation, deputies of the convention would have been sent instead of the guard. Yet, not one of them decided to show up. Show up. I wonder why. Oh my. Well, we're just off to a jolly good start, aren't we? How was one of your soldiers injured? He was hit in the chest with a rock. He fell and for a moment could not catch his breath. You tried to calm the crowd after the incident. Prosecutor, you must be joking. Why do you say that? They wanted blood, their own or ours. It did not matter, they just wanted it spilled, and you gave them what they wanted. I had good reason and a document in my hand. I was also responsible for the life of my subordinates. You chose the people to take people's lives. Did that document come from God? Excuse me, they would have taken his life in a heartbeat. Yep. Um, question. Before you continue with the questions, can yep. we look at the, uh, the, the, the report? protocol? Okay. Is Did that we... a report? Oh yeah. my goodness. I'm so dumb. <laughs> okay, what was the reason for the commander's resignation? I don't know, we're going to have to figure that out. Is the defendant a monarchist? I don't know. Defendant confessed to the, the crime. crime. Not really. Oh, what's this? Oh, never mind. Oh. Yeah. So he has mentioned it. I didn't notice that before. And I did, yeah. He, he confessed. Okay. So. Oh, why am I going there? Okay, so what words did he use when addressing the crowd? I asked them for a moment of silence, then when they were quiet, when they why, why they were fighting. That's when the peace ended and both sides started throwing accusations. Maybe you shouldn't have intervened, maybe you only agitated the crowd more. How? By asking for a moment of silence? Did you say anything else? I was trying to shout over the crowd, someone accused me of being a spy trying to silence them and suppress their freedom of speech. What, what Was that your aim? My aim was to prevent bloodshed. As you can see, it was impossible. I don't disagree with him. I don't. During the arrest, you said that you were given official documents issued by... Because you're the judge, may I interrupt? That line of defense is pure nonsense. Why is that? I brought the document myself to be signed by this judge. He signed it. He gave me the right to use force in the case of immediate danger from the protesters. You killed 34 people. Would you rather there were hundreds of dead soldiers and protesters with the rest of them still fighting each other? I had good reason to use force, and the fact that I am standing here accused only confirms that the judge present here... And the deputies of the convention are immediately looking for a scapegoat. Nonsense, the convention would never. Here is the document signed by Judge Alexis Fidel and the head of the tribunal, Raymond Devoy. Two judges confirmed my right to use weapons. It was a recommendation for the convention so they could write up such a law. And I, I guess so. And I recommended that you release me. I'm sorry, and I recommend that you release me and sentence these judges to death instead. He's right. Ooh. 
Oh! That went down from here. Yeah, that was a big one. Okay. Some of the witness? Hasn't mentioned. Okay. Oh, sorry. No one. Um, should we go for the reason for the dismissal? That's one of them. Oh. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> or should we go for the witness first? Did... Figure out what the witness does. If he brings him close, then we won't. Sure. We'll Summon guess. the witness. We will guess. Who be you? Look at it. <laughs> Look at the what? The hair, the beard. The chiseled jaw. Yeah. <laughs> Last was set, Mazur the Judge. I'm a simple blacksmith. Citizen D, confirm being a witness of the events that were are the cause of our gathering today. Yes, I was a witness. I mean, I was there. I saw everything and I want to talk about it. I really do. Um, Please tell me if you saw exactly how the accused acted. Can the accused recall what the people from both sides are saying? Mm. Um, if... Because if, if we go like the bottom route, mm -hmm. that will kind of give a, um, a window into what the crowd was like. Mm-hmm. And that could be good or bad. I think that would be good. Right, let's do it. I'm in. I'm in. Okay. Can the accused recall what the people from both sides were saying? I'd yeah. rather not. Why? Because they were vulgar, Monsieur the Judge. They spewed curses at Robespierre, at Citizen Capet. I'd say these accusations were false. Please give us an example so we may understand their nature. Goat fucker, <laughs> beds weave, beds fever? Bed swerver. Swerver. Dal cop. That's what they said about the commander in chief. They also said Citizen Capet was enough. The crowd of the guard. Uh, who attacked first? The crowd of the guard. Yeah. Yeah. Who attacked first? The crowd of the guard. I said the crowd. They threw something at that poor soldier. And after that, well, they started shooting. Wait. There was no order? I didn't hear any orders. It was loud and it all happened so fast. Yeah. Look at that. So, so yeah. So, they almost want to free him. So, were you given a reason for your dismissal? Yeah. Multiple reasons. I will not address all of them, but the one that wounded me the most was my supposed incompetence, and you caused the death of many people have died during the revolution, and yet the murderers of the members of the convention or judges of the tribunals. The accused should choose his words more carefully. That is slander, a tool of monarchist machine. Spare me your speeches. If you had any decency left in you, you would remain silent. If we let you go, would you go back to your duty? No. Now I can see that being a scapegoat is the best I could, could have hoped for here. A deputy or a judge makes a mistake, so they convict a soldier. That is how it has always been and how it always will be. Let's behead a politician. <laughs> oh. I see. So, what was the reason for the his incompetence? So, is he a monarchist? I don't know if you want to go there. I don't know. Like, it didn't go up that much. I don't so... know. We know what happens when you go against So, the what's his name again? Matthew. Matthew, okay, let's try the hierarchy. How could you forget that? Is he a monarchist? Let's see. Hero. National Guard, he seemed not to not put trust in any people, even if they were able to start a revolution. So does that mean he's a monarchist? Because in line, so to speak? Oh wait, who's Roland? That's German internal internal affairs. Oh, okay. Cool. We're not gonna go into that quite yet. So um, second. Are you cheating? I am very much cheating with my clicky clickies on loud, apparently. You, you do know what a monarchist is, right? No! Oh boy. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, so that's anti-revolutionary, right? I believe, believe so. He believes in having uh, the Capet King. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, Capet. So... He did not make a specific list. So I'm that? going with that one. That's very... Or, or we could acquire help. Let's do that. Yeah, you're I was right. right. You're right. I, I was right. So I think that's pretty correct. I think so too. All right. So the jury's opinion is jail. I am liable to say jail as well. Yeah, let's do it. I'm gonna sign right in the middle this time. Ooh, like an old person. I want, I want the stamp above the signature now. But, but, but I gotta make sure people can read. All right. I hereby sentence Matthew Barrel to prison. May the convicted ponder his actions. He murdered so many, and what? That's it? Excuse me. The lives of 34 people mean less to you than that of the former commander-in-chief? He didn't? 
Yeah, I can see that. Uh. It's difficult because, like, it, it's always very vague about what you're accusing them of mm. and what they're agreeing that yeah. they did. Because, like, did you kill 34 people? Clearly he killed 34 yeah. people. And it's like, well, is that why he's here or what? Anyways. Yeah. So let's check it off. Okay, so that's fine. Influence points. Plus one. Yay. A three influence. Yay, yay. All right, next up. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Why did we gain an influence point? I'm not exactly sure. I honest. thought that was a reputation point, but no. Oh. They got the king. Ooh. There can be no more demeaning experience for revolutionary Paris than the escape of Citizen Capet. He escaped, slipped right from their hands, and the revolution now seems feeble and weak. The people resemble a child that could easily be duped by anyone. However, the Republic quickly composed itself thanks to a postmaster and his people, who were able to catch the fugitives escaped to Montmedy. Ordinary citizens led to the fall of a monarch. You will have a chance to serve the Republic as well, for Citizen Capet will face the tribunal tomorrow. You will choose how he will be remembered, as a traitor and a coward, or as an unlucky statesman. If it were for the prison guards to decide, there would only be one outcome. Da -na -na -na. So, should we uh, allow the guards to rough up him in uh, prison, or leave him alone until uh, the trial? Let's leave him alone. Let's let his actions speak for himself. I agree. I agree entirely. Oh, here we go. Oh, work on tomorrow's trial. The influence of reactions in court. Oh, dear. Oh, what? 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 Because, because this morning, the choice we oh, made. Oh, uh, mm, uh, Right? If we do this, they're going to be passed. Okay. Why would um, we work on tomorrow's trial? Well, it's, it's the king. You would think that that would be oh. reason to actually work oh, on I the see. trial. I see. Um, what does demonstration do? What demonstration does, does stuff for the kids? The wife's going to hate us. Yeah. Let's well, find something we that the can't wife doesn't do anything that the wife likes. Well, that's because she needs to reevaluate her attitude. Oh, can we can we do a political debate that actually makes grumpy grandpa happy? And no, it doesn't. Just kidding. It only makes... Paragraphs and codes does. I think playtime with the children is the most beneficial at this point because it yeah. only makes her mad. Yeah. Let's do it. Like, it's our reputation, but at the same time, it's like... Every you know what? Yeah, it makes me there. so mad that playing with our kids mm -hmm. makes her pissed off. Yeah, like seriously, what kind of what kind of household is this? Yeah, like really. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so we got a bonus now because the kids had with us. So the next time we get a chance, we need to work on the wife. So that is where we are gonna stop for today, guys. So thank you so much for watching, and we will see you guys in the next video. Bye.